Joining us now is Nick Fortuna, founder and managing partner at Allen & Fortuna LLP. Thank you so much, Nick, for joining us. Now, do employers have legal ground to mandate vaccination as a condition of employment on both federal and private levels? Yeah, thank you for having me on. The general answer is yes. Uh, there are some exceptions to some concerns that the employer has to take into consideration. If uh, having, if someone with a disability can't get the vaccine or they have a medical reason such as they're allergic to some of the ingredients, then the employer has to consider giving them reasonable accommodations. The other area under Title VII, uh, the, if someone has a sincerely held religious belief that would prevent them from getting vaccinations, they would also have to consider giving them reasonable accommodations. It's not absolute that they have to accommodate them. It's if it causes an undue hardship to the employer, then he doesn't have to or she does not have to accommodate uh, the objecting employee. That's that's general. There are some states, a you know, number of states now are enacting legislation mm -hmm. limiting or expanding employers rights to uh, require vaccinations. And when you talk about requiring vaccinations, it's, it's not forcing people to get the vaccination. It's having them make a choice. Do you want to work here or do you, you must get the vaccination? You don't have to get the vaccination, but then you can't work here. Now, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which is an authority for both public and private employers, has issued guidance that employers, like you mentioned, could require employee vaccinations so long as they offer reasonable accommodations. What counts as a reasonable accommodation? Just elaborate on that. Sure. Um, an employer uh, would have to accommodate uh, an employee in, in, in the, the two circumstances, or really three circumstances that I had mentioned. One, if there's a sincerely held religious belief. Uh, two, if the, if the employee is disabled and can't get the vaccine, or there's a medical reason such as they're allergic to the ingredients of the vaccine. Okay. The accommodation is, uh, can the employer still use that employee um, with nothing more than a de minimis, de minimis impact on his uh, or her uh, place of employment. Also, the employer has to consider the safety and health and welfare of the other employees, how that is impacted. So if the employer can accommodate that person without much hardship, then the employer should or is required to rather uh, under the uh, Americans with Disability Act. Now, the Department of Justice is saying that federal law doesn't prohibit um, public agencies and private businesses from requiring COVID vaccines, but so many states, like you said, already passed anti-discrimination legislations that bar employers from mandating vaccines. Does this mean if an individual employee were to sue their employer over vaccine requirement, they would actually have a leg to stand on? Okay, so uh, some states, they're they're passing laws such as Georgia saying that you can't require proof that the person is vaccinated, but you can ask them and you have to rely on what the employee is saying or the individual person. The, 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 the law is broader than that. It could be for uh, you know public entertainment purposes. However, uh, a lot of the state laws are drawn in, imperfectly. There's not a lot, you know, some states don't spend enough time thinking about how that, that law is going to integrate into uh, the larger picture, the federal, the federal scheme. Um, so there will be circumstances that there will be litigation and the employee will probably have standing on state law to sue the employer or challenge the employer's mandate in some circumstances. Now, what about unions? Could unions potentially challenge or bargain over vaccine mandates? Yeah, uh, unions who are the biggest factor um, in, in allowing large employers such as Netflix to now mandate. Unions finally went along with it. At first they had some objections. It would be a contractual obligation that would be negotiated between the employer and the union to mandate the employees to uh, to allow the requirement to go through that employees have to get uh, vaccinated. But yes, employees play an important role as far as whether or not they can legally block it. 
uh, if an employer imposed it on the union, not unless in the contract already that they have with the, the collective bargaining agreement is what I'm talking about, uh, have some prohibition on that already, then they wouldn't be able to block it. Let's talk a little bit more about this anti-discrimination legislation here. Some say the laws count as discrimination or civil rights statute. Some say they don't. Now, as a lawyer, where do you stand on this? Okay, so it is not a violation of civil rights to uh, require uh, someone to be vaccinated to participate in certain activities. We have a long history in this country of requiring vaccinations. There's history of uh, requiring certain vaccinations to travel, to get into the country, to leave the country, and then go to other countries. And when you come back, they want to make sure that you're not bringing any diseases in. So the priority of protecting the health of the public has always been paramount. So it's not a violation of civil rights. People aren't being forced to get vaccinated. They're just being excluded from certain activities if they choose not to be vaccinated. It's a big difference. So no, it's not a civil rights question. Now, Usually when it comes to this vaccination talk, some people say HIPAA, HIPAA, HIPAA. They just, they just scream HIPAA from the top of their lungs. Now, I want to ask here now, employers requiring vaccinations from their employees. Is that a HIPAA violation? Okay, so it hasn't been considered a HIPAA violation. And the way you would look at it, it's a little bit nuanced. The employer is not requiring uh, the employee to disclose their health conditions. They're requiring them to disclose whether or not they had certain treatment that's required to protect the health and safety of the employees. Now, in the circumstance where an employee objects because of his medical condition, then the employee has to come forward with what that medical condition is so the employer can consider whether or not to uh, provide an accommodation. So it's not, HIP is not gonna be implicated in these circumstances. Nick Fortuna, founder and managing partner at Allen & Fortuna LLP. Thank you so much for the clarity, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us in our show this morning.